so I just left the physical therapist's office. I haven't seen her for about three and a half weeks. Um, she didn't make me come in for treatment because she looked at me and she was like, you seem like you know what you're doing and you are really motivated to get better. So I trust that you're going to do the exercises at home. So I haven't seen her for about three and a half weeks. So I had my follow up today. Now, when I initially injured my ankle in June, they told me that it would take six weeks to heal. So my brain the entire time, I've been thinking, okay, I'm going to be better in six weeks. Because I chose to ignore the two important words, takes at least six weeks to heal. So this whole time, I have been clinging on to a little bit of hope that I would just go into that appointment today and they would be like, yes, you're ready. You can start running. You can run up Pikes Peak next month. And I was actually told that I can't run for at least another month. So I'm sitting here in my car trying not to cry because um, I know that there's a lot bigger things in life to be sad about and to have a, lo a lot bigger problems than not being able to run a race that I had my heart set on. But it still just freaking sucks, man. Like this was such a big goal of mine for this year. And like to literally just have that like snatched away while you were training for it, <clears throat> it just, it stinks. Like running is my therapy. Running is my way of coping with hard stuff. Running is something that I started doing to remind myself of all of the ways that I am strong and all of the things that my body is capable in spite of all of the ways that ha had failed me through infertility and miscarriage. And so to go in there today and think like, okay, I'm going to be back on the mountain right away. And then to just be told like, yeah, no, you're, you can't even, like I told her I hiked five miles last week and I got in trouble because apparently that was too much. Even though my ankle didn't hurt the entire time, walking five miles is too much. And that's like so frustrating to me. And I realized that there are people who would give anything to walk five miles. And I just feel like a big whiny baby right now, just talking about this but I know the other runners on my feed get it I know like they will understand what it's like to be taken out by an injury and so I'm sitting here and I'm thinking like what can I put my positive what can I put my energy into instead of being focused on all of the things that I can't do now and it's actually something that I'm working through in therapy with my therapist because she's like Megan you have to and it's ironic because this is this is exactly what um, I help other people do, right? She's like, you have to love your body for where it's at, not because of what it can do, but just, you know, for where it's at. And I'm like, that's what I help other people do. And now you're telling me I need to do the same thing. She told me that I needed to learn how to love my body and and recognize it for all that it is in in every season, not just because I can use it to like run up mountains and everything. So it's really, it's really interesting and I like just the ironic situation that I find myself in. So, um, I can still hike. So basically I broke the 10% rule because I went from three to five miles. I'm like, come on, I was training for a marathon. I could go and walk five miles. And, uh, she said the jump between three and five was too fast, too much. So I was given some more exercises to keep doing. I have to still continue to keep all of the impact out of my ex my workouts. Um, so like the good news is that she says I'm on track. That's the good news. I'm healing like I'm supposed to. The little bit of puffiness that I still have in my ankle is completely normal at this point, she said, because it was such a serious injury and I'm only about five, five and a half weeks post injury. She said all of that is normal. She said my range of motion is normal. She said now I have to be careful because she had me doing some squats and she said you are tr I'm, that I'm transferring all of my weight to my good side and she said I need to be careful about that because then I'm going to end up with other injuries, you know, imbalance issues. So I just have to continue to be really mindful um, and I can start doing some more balance exercises, which means I can start yo doing yoga again and um, maybe taking my paddleboard out for short amounts of time, but nothing that's really going to fatigue or strain the ankle. And it's just really frustrating. And yeah, Tony, you're right. Perspective is everything. And I realize that not being able to run a race is not the end of the world. 
but this is now the second time where I've had my heart set on like this big marathon and my goal was like taken away. So maybe it's the universe telling me that I shouldn't be going after marathon distances anymore. <laughs> maybe I need to stick to shorter distances, but I don't know. So I'm really bummed because I really thought that I was going to go back in there today and get the all clear to start running again. And now I can't run for at least at least I don't see her for another month. And she said, you know, my goal is to have you start introducing impact um, slowly. And I said, before or after the next time I see you? And she goes, after. I said, okay, you have to tell me these things because if you say that I can start reintroducing impact, because the thing is, is it doesn't hurt. It's weak, but it's not painful. Even after my initial injury, I mean, I hobbled back down to my car two and a half miles. The pain was there, but it wasn't the sharp shooting pain. And so I don't feel injured I don't feel injured and that's what's so frustrating about this whole situation is that I don't feel injured. But she made a really good point. I injured my ankle in January and this is a second injury and she said she said um you know, I don't want to rush this because just because you're feeling good, I want to make sure you're 100% healed because you were feeling really good right before this injury happened. And I was like on top of the world, just trucking down bar trail. Um, when this injury happened, I felt amazing. And then boom, just taken out by a stupid rock. So yeah. And I'm starting to, because I'm not as active, I'm starting to feel some tightness in my left Achilles and heel pain. And she said, yeah, you need to keep an eye on that because you don't want that to turn into plantar fasciitis, Tony. Yeah, so now I have to watch out for that too. And it's just really, really frustrating because I've been running now for like since Hazel was born. That's when I started running when she was about five months old and I haven't stopped. And so to be taken out like this, it freaking sucks. And to be here and be part of such an amazing running community and having to sit on the sidelines, it's really, 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 really hard and frustrating. And so I'm just trying to focus on the things that I can control, you know, be, be, um, assertive, um, with my assertive, I don't think that's the right word, but be diligent with my physical therapy, do what I'm supposed to and just get better and then like pour into other people and, and help them achieve their goals. That's, that's all I can do. It's all about mindset, right? So I can either sit here and stew and whine and cry on Facebook <laughs> or I can be proactive and be positive. And so that's what I'm trying to, trying to focus on. So I don't know. Yeah. Next year I will come in first in the Pikes Peak Marathon. I don't think so, girl. <laughs> no way. That's, that's, I actually know the person who, uh, who got first last year and she's probably going to win again this year and she's absolutely amazing. So I'm a pretty mediocre runner whenever it comes to most of the talent in Colorado, which is one reason I love this community so much. So it's not every day or every place that you can be running on a training run and like high five Olympians. That's pretty freaking cool. So yeah. So it sucks, but it's not the end of the world, you guys, right? My main focus right now is I'm not even going to think about my next race because, you know, I'm always sharing that I'm training for life, right? I'm not training to get skinny. I'm not training to get the perfect bikini body. I'm training so that I feel strong and empowered and so I can continue to live a healthy, active lifestyle. So like I had to tell Mike when he tore his shoulder... This is bigger than any race. This is about being healthy for the rest of my life and being my life and being able to do those things that I want to continue to do. And I'm going to Thailand in December, you guys. I have to get this ankle healthy so that I can go paddling and rock climbing and spelunking and rappelling and all these other crazy things that we're going to be doing. Like that's the trip of the lifetime. That's the last thing that I need is to have a bum ankle on that trip. So I'm heartbroken because I was still holding out a sliver of hope that I would be on the mountain next month with everybody else doing Pikes Peak Marathon, but it's not in the books. So I wish, I really wish that I could transfer my bib to someone else like I got to for Bar Trail Mountain Race because I would love to give someone else that opportunity since I can't have it myself but I understand why they don't allow that so it's not it's not a race you just wake up and decide that you want to go run one day so um but yeah that's an update on my ankle you guys so keep watching for my ridiculous 
my ridiculous modifications on my workouts. A lot of times when I'm just stepping stuff out instead of doing like a full plyo jump or something like that, I feel, um, I feel like I'm in a Richard Simmons video, honestly, a lot of times, like sweat into the oldies. I just need to put on some like locomotion music or something like that to do my workouts because that's really what I feel like most of the time whenever I'm just doing these like easy modifications but not knocking anybody who has to modify because I still get my heart rate um, elevated we are still moving we're still burning calories we're still taking care of ourselves and being active but this has just been a, a big challenge for me to have to dial things back a little bit but it's also a really good time to get some some perspective. So that was a huge lightning strike and the sirens are going off. So I better get home. So yes, sweat into the oldies. My mom used to do those all the time. <laughs> all right, you guys, thanks for letting me vent. Thanks for having my back. And all of you guys who are going to be doing Pikes Peak Ultra this weekend and who are going to be um, doing Pikes Peak Marathon, just know that I wish that I could be with you and I am with you in spirit and sending you lots of good vibes for a healthy and happy and fun and most importantly a safe race. All right. Bye guys.